Hello, I am Bonnie Steen, and today we will be discussing the National Electrical Code Article 517, Healthcare Facilities and How Hubble Wiring Device Kellums Can Provide Receptacles to Meet Article 517 Requirements. With me today from Hubble Wiring Device Kellums is Benny Thomas, Product Manager responsible for Hospital Grade Straight Blade Receptacles. Welcome, Benny. Hi, thanks for having me. I understand that there have been several changes to Article 517 of the National Electrical Code in regards to electrical receptacles. Can you please elaborate? Yeah, one of the major changes is the number of receptacles with the patient bed locations listed in Category 2 and Category 1, or general care and critical care spaces. Benny, can you explain the difference between Category 2 and Category 1 patient bed locations? Absolutely. But before I detail Category 2 general care or Category 1 critical care spaces, I should explain the National Electrical Code definition for patient bed vicinity, patient bed location, and patient care spaces. The patient bed vicinity is a space within the patient bed location intended for examination and treatment of patients, extending six feet beyond the normal location of the patient bed, chair or table, treadmill, or other device that supports the patient during the examination, and it extends vertically to seven feet, six inches above the floor. So once the patient bed vicinity is determined, the patient bed location is then defined. The patient bed location is the location of the patient's sleeping bed or the bed procedure table. Patient bed locations are defined by four patient care space categories. The patient care space is any space of a healthcare facility where the patients are being intended, uh, examined, or treated. So category one or critical care space is one where if there's a major failure of equipment or system, it's likely to cause a major injury to the patient, staff, or visitors. Example would be spaces where patients are subjected to invasive procedures or connected to line-operated patient care-related appliances, critical care, intensive care, and special care treatment rooms, such as angiography laboratories, cardiac catheterization laboratories, delivery rooms, or post-anesthesia care units. Category 2 or general care space is one in which failure of equipment or system is likely to cause minor injury to patients. Examples would be patient bedrooms, dialysis room, and procedural rooms. And although it's not part of this discussion, we should also mention Category 3 and 4 spaces. Category 3 is a basic care space where if there's a failure, it's not likely to cause any injury to patients or staff, but it can cause patient discomfort. Typically, it's where basic medical or dental care treatment or examinations are performed. Examples are treatment care rooms and clinics, medical and dental offices, nursing home, and limited care facilities. Category 4 is a space in which failure to equipment is not likely to have any impact on the patient care. Examples are anesthesia workrooms, sterile supply laboratories, morgues, waiting rooms, and lounges. Benny, how do the four category spaces pertain to Article 517 of the National Electrical Code? The National Electrical Code Article 517 as it relates to patient bed locations focuses on Category 1 and Category 2 spaces. How so? And how did the code change? Article 517 has increased the number of receptacles that are listed in Category 1 and Category 2 spaces. Why the increase? The main reason is that in both Category 1 and Category 2 spaces, the amount of medical evaluation equipment has increased. So with this increase, there's a demand for more receptacles in both those categories. Can you elaborate on the changes? Um, Article 517.18b1 pertains to Category 2 or general care spaces. So the minimum number of receptacles in that location has gone from 4 to 8 receptacles. And those receptacles have to be a single, a duplex, or a quadplex, or any combination of the three. And uh, same goes for Article 517.19b1, which is for critical care spaces or Category 1 locations. The minimum went from six receptacles to 14 receptacles. And again, it has to be either a single, duplex, or quadplex, or any combination of the three. And in both those categories, um, it's required to be a hospital-grade receptacle. Benny, are the hospital-grade receptacles different from non-hospital-grade receptacles? 
Hospital grade receptacles must comply with general use requirements and are specifically designed and are subjected to additional requirements for standards. So they go through additional testing, which um, are tests for additional grounding reliability, assembly integrity, strength and durability. Hospital grade devices have a distinguishable green dot on the face of the receptacle. Why do hospital grade receptacles have to exceed the general use requirements? Great question. Healthcare facilities electrical receptacles have a much higher degree of use, constant cleaning, and potential for abuse than a standard receptacle in a non-healthcare environment. Years ago, the healthcare industry and electrical receptacle manufacturers in conjunction with third-party testing facilities developed the additional testing to meet and or exceed healthcare facility needs. How does Hubble satisfy and meet the National Electrical Code, Article 517, for Category 1 and Category 2 spaces? Hubble offers a wide variety of hospital-grade receptacles that meet and or exceed the requirements for Articles 517.18b1 and 517.19b1. Hubble's offering includes single receptacles, duplex receptacles, modular receptacles, and quadplexes. The healthcare facility can contact the local Hubble territory manager or go to hubblewiring.com for further information, pricing, and availability. Benny, thank you for this informative discussion on the changes to National Electrical Code Article 517, Healthcare Facilities, and Hubble Wiring Device Kellum Solutions. You're welcome. Thank you.